I'm a lot more of the latter these days and the old days. Um, in fact, I have been finding all these old notebooks. I used to sit there the night before, sometimes a photo shoot. Um, I mean, sketching out these, I can't believe I even used to do this, like just doing these drawings and here's the light, here's the wall and there's a bar. And, um, and sometimes they would just be for an idea of a shoot that wasn't going to happen. Just dreaming, like, here's a new technique that I've thought up and here's how you do it before I forget. And that was, I'm sure, very useful in my younger days because, you know, it just required me to think about this stuff, stuff that now I take for granted. And I, you know, I'm good at it now. I know how to but it was probably in a phase of my life where I wasn't sure. And it, you know, it was very helpful because I dropped out of school, you know, and moved out to California. I couldn't wait. So maybe I was forcing myself into my own kind of, you know, university. As, you know, I got more into this, like the climbers book and stuff, you know, and I was, I had a pretty crazy, the last 10 years were extremely homeless and uh, vagabond living in a suitcase. And it was exciting, but it was also very precarious. But it also meant that I couldn't really, you know, I was traveling very light. So usually just two cameras, like my old Rolly Flex and my Leica. So, and I was showing up in these places where I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how long I would be there. It just had to be thinking it up as you go. And it was crazy with these old climbers. I mean, sometimes I would appear in some old Italian village with some old man who didn't speak English and I didn't speak Italian and there's nobody else there. So we can't talk. He's old as shit. He may die any minute or fall asleep. And I'm looking at the wall and the light is disappearing, the sun setting. And it's just like you're a stranger in someone's home. So there's, you know, your attitude counts. Also, older people expect a little more, uh, you know, sometimes a little more, you know, different situation than if this was a 20 year old. I was coming to. Oh, yeah. good. You're trying to be very, you know, proper, but also very human. Also, you know, you're trying not to be a weirdo. You're trying to be someone they can trust. But you're also looking like, what the fuck am I going to do in this place? It's a dump. It's just so, but not in a good way. It's just like impossible. Oh, my God. And the light's disappearing. It's really challenging. And, um, and again, this guy may die next week, and this is my one chance. And also, it's like my last $15 in the world to take this train to this village. So. Crazy stuff. But that led to some of the best pictures just showing up like that and not having any kind of plan because you don't know. There's, there's just no use in making a plan because this guy may be so old he's not allowed out of his room. Like Ricardo Cassin, who's the he was 100 years old. He died five days later and he couldn't walk. And so basically he was in this room. And the light was bad, but, you know, then I just got this idea to go outside and shoot him through the window. It was so dark in there and it was just, there wasn't anything good about it. And it was really just a thing to save myself. It's like, oh my God, this guy's very important to me and to the book. And it was really kind of hard to get up to this situation, but it turned out to be the best idea, just going outside. I remember doing that, going outside thinking, well, this is a dumb idea. And it just made it so much better. So I think it's really important to um, stay flexible and not let your plans be set because very often you're wrong. <laughs> People are like, who's the coolest person you met? And they always think I'm going to say Keith Richards or something. It's like Dolly Parton, man. She's just a really amazing woman, funny and smart and professional, loving and nice and friendly and like, God, she's everything. Sometimes just this feeling I have about stuff like that is so strong that I just wonder if I'm 
if me, Jim Harrington, if I'm an echo off of another life, you know, in a parallel universe, or am I, am I just a blip off of another life? Because it's not just liking old stuff. I, I don't know. It, uh, I love this stuff from when I was three years old, four years old, five years old. I loved old movies, old photographs, old stories, older music. Um, and just that was my original feelings about being alive was I couldn't tell you why. I don't know why. <laughs>